G'day guys, Matt here again. Um, still a little wet out there, so it's another few hours before we're actually ready to ready to go. Um, yeah, so we've got a spray plane going over the top. We got about oh, 20 mils of rain after the last video. Um, yeah, we got some thunderstorms that night, so uh, we've had a fairly wet weekend, which was good. We're able to get a few things sorted, but just have a bit of a break because um, this week's going to be very interesting. Uh, we've got more rain forecast in about a week's time, and yeah, probably four or five days of rain. So we really need to hook in, get as much done as we can. Um, Looks like the wheat is going to come in. Um, it seems to be dry enough to pretty well go straight from the barley onto the wheat. Um, so yeah, well that will be that'll be good. And then um, yeah, the, we've got just this section on this property of wheat that's ready. Um, and then we've got some contracting wheat to do that's ready as well. So we're trying to get as much done as we can. But this morning we had our our Monday morning meeting and basically decided that we'll be harvesting. Yeah, so what we did figure out was header number one needs to have the one of the draper belts on the front. We need to flip it around because on the leading edge of it, it's actually got a lip um, that, that's bent down a bit. So we think there's a bit of stuff getting down in there and it's blocking up the, the drive roller. So that is the plan there. Um, now, yeah, on the storms that were happening on the weekend, there was actually some hail. So that was um, that's why everything's pretty well jam-packed tight in here so uh but yeah we thankfully didn't get any hail but yeah she was pretty windy and pretty heavy rain but uh yeah no it's all everything looks all good so need to shuffle some headers around and get get the other one over there so we can get working on it i've got also got silos being cleaned out i've actually had um last season's wheat in uh that silo there and we've just been trying for a, a month or so to get that out, obviously, before harvest. And thankfully, um, yeah, we're able to get rid of it. So, yeah, we've just got to clean that out thoroughly. Um, on the other main property, there is some silos to be cleaned out as well. So, yeah, we've got a few people doing a few different things. Yeah, so you can see here, there's a gap down in there. So that's what we're trying to, we'll flip this around, turn it around the other way, and hopefully that just stands up a bit better. And um, yeah, we won't get so much um, rubbish down in there, which then gets caught up. Uh, that's the drive end actually. So it gets caught up on this roller and stops it. So that's what we'll try and achieve. So this is what it looks like with the the belt off um see so yeah, this is the roller here and what was happening you can see there's a bit of gunk i've scraped off most of it but you get stuff coming down into there and it sits on the bottom belt and then it all wraps around here and yeah tangles up and it all just gets all blocked up there so then the, the draper belt actually stops moving and yeah obviously if that stops moving nothing goes in there so uh, we pulled it out um, we're just going to swap it around clean it all out and um, yeah hopefully hopefully that'll keep us going so we do have new draper belts there if we need it but we want to obviously they're, they're not cheap so we want to try and keep this going as long as we can and uh, yeah that way I think we might be able to see us through this harvest and uh, yeah then that'll be good
so the belt's been flipped around and you can see there isn't isn't the gap there anymore so hopefully that solves solves our issues Right, oh, hey, it's time for a nibble we'll see what the moisture's doing Well guys, I just moved the auger from Silo 2 to Silo 1. But uh, yeah, there's a few people asking why we have these uh, cone bottom silos instead of the flat bottom ones. Um, now there are a lot, here in Australia, there are a lot of the flat bottom ones uh, around on some of the bigger farms. But for us, we do a bit of like seed production and there's a lot of different varieties we grow. So there's sort of, we don't have a need to have like 2000 tonnes of one variety. Um, now the other reason we don't have a heap of big silos is uh, we, we, a lot of our grain just goes straight from the paddock into town. So in town um, at the different um, places where you can take it, you can either warehouse it, which is basically you just send it there and they store it. You obviously pay to store it there, but then you can sell it later or do whatever you want with it later on. So it frees up a bit of your on-farm storage, like say the prices are pretty bad at, at harvest time and you want to just wait a little bit. So that's always an option. Um, so yeah, a lot of our grain goes straight into town, but we just have these silos, like we can store a couple of hundred ton of seed um, production crop. And you know, we can have one in there, we have a different variety in there and do whatever we want. We can use these if we're running out of storage in the paddock or whatever, and there's a hold up in town or something, we can, um, yeah, bring it up here and, and store grain in here while we're waiting and then take it straight out and take it into town. But yeah, it's just a different way of working it. Um, the cone bottom ones are really easy to clean out uh, and you just, you don't have to, yeah, you just, it all basically comes out and then you just get in there. We, we get in there with a firefighter and just cl uh, blow it all out with water, uh, make sure it's all clean, particularly with our seed production varieties. Um, so these two this morning were cleaned out and yeah, so get in there and you just really get under all the nooks and crannies um, under the aerator tubes and things and yeah just make sure there's not a single grain in there so it's quite easy to clean out um, but yeah if we were a lot bigger farmers and we had a lot more acres of of one variety then yes the flat bottom ones uh, they're a bit they're cheaper per ton to buy well it's uh still a little wet the barley's about a bit over 13 percent so we need that down to about 12.5 so we're probably gonna get another two, maybe three hours uh, to wait for that. But yeah, it's just been a bit of an overcast day and might be able to see. Just a little overcast, not a lot of sun. There is a little bit of breeze, which will dry it out. But yeah, usually it should have been, if we had a sunny day, it would be right by now, but that's the way it is. So yeah, while we're waiting, I, yeah, been tidying up our oil storage. So we had a bit of a mess here, there was all oil just here being dumped so i got hydraulic oil there and miscellaneous oil so there's a bit of grease and just specialty oil for different things uh we've got uh diff and gear and transmission oil here uh, and then we've got engine oil so that's our different ones we've got uh, full sun full synthetic engine oil so that's for the cat the steiger and a couple of other things we've got our regular uh oil for just basically all the diesel engines, everything else. And then we've got, yeah, just a bit of odds and ends specialty oil, a bit of cat engine oil for the dozers. And over here's our coolant. So we do have quite a few drums of coolant on the work trailer, but yeah, this is our little storage there. So looks a bit neater. Well, we're now tidying up a few batteries. Uh, this is where all the batteries that sort of come that we need to test and just check whether they're useful for something before they get thrown out, but, or recycled. Uh, now this battery here, this is the one I ran over a couple of videos ago, maybe three videos ago even. Um, but yeah, old man decided to attempt to resurrect it. Now it didn't appear that the insides had been damaged. It still tests fine, um, but just the casing had cracked and just squished a little bit. So I think he used a full tube of silicon to yeah seal it all up. And yeah, it actually tests okay. And we probably can use that for just as a stationary battery uh, to power up the GPS unit or something. Wouldn't want to put it in a, any vehicle or anything with vibration because with that damage there, there is a chance that the plates that are there might short out or something. So we'll just keep that as a 
option for the GPS systems, but yeah, see if we can get these tidied up. These ones are all ready to go out the back um, and then maybe get taken in to the scrap metal man. Well, it's been a bit of a frustrating day. One of the few times of the year where it can get frustrating. Um, it's just been an overcast day, quite cool. Usually we should be in the, oh, it should be around the 35 degree Celsius sort of temperatures, but we're sort of in the mid twenties and overcast. So yeah, just the, it's not drying out. So the, the limit we need to get for barley is about 12 and a half and we're sitting at about 13 or 12.8 moisture. And yeah, we just, it's just been taking all day to try and come down. So we may not even get to do a lot. Um, we might just get a truckload, see what happens. But yeah, it's just just one of those things. We've been yeah, doing a few shed jobs, but it's quite, uh, quite hard when you know it's so close. But anyway, it is what it is. So we'll see how we go. So you can see, well, you can see the mother bin there, um, and the headers, uh, you can see a bit of the dust, but anyway, been able to get going. So the moisture just dipped below the cutoff. So yeah, we're full steam ahead. Now I'm in the Screaming Demon here, the, the Echo with the two stroke diesel in it, um, and the Road Ranger. So yeah, I'm gonna get me, I'm gonna get me exercise tonight, I think. So we're just running both Echoes, uh, taking them to the silos up at the hill here just to try and clear clear out a bit of the mother bin. Um, we've got the trucks are already in town, uh, but yeah, there's a bit of a line up there. So yeah, we just got to try and keep it all away. So I'll show you why we call it the Screaming Demon. You got to change gears just before you think the engine's going to blow up. So because it's two stroke, it sounds like it's really revving out. Um, but yeah, it, it's deceiving. So I'll just go through this little dip and then we'll, we'll do a gear change. Might be tricky with only one hand. Overcast day, we still managed to get a nice harvest sunset. So usually this time of year we get really deep colours. Um, yeah, we get really nice sunsets. So that's always a, a nice thing out working and seeing them. But yeah, it looks like the moisture is creeping up on us again. So I think we may very well have to pull a pin tonight. Um, it's just yeah no point keep getting off wet grain we do do have options to dry it with the big aerators but yeah we just gotta juggle around a few things but hopefully we can get it to yeah get it to work hopefully we get it off and see what the wheat's doing well guys another day now much better drying weather today we we're a bit nervous with the forecast. I was saying it was still gonna be a bit cloudy and um, yeah, a bit damp, but uh, yeah, blue skies, nice breeze. So we're looking good. I think we're gonna get started on the barley again soon. So hopefully we'll get that tidied off today and then we'll be onto the wheat. So the wheat's at about 13% moisture 
Uh, so we need that to be 12 and a half. So we're hoping by, by the time we get to it, it'll be dry. Um, yeah, so that's what we're gonna be doing today. Just shuffling a bit more grain through and working out um, what we're doing there. We did have a bit of wet grain. So we actually got it in the aerators over here um, and drying that down. It was only just over, so it shouldn't take too long. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll get cracking. plan is to just use one header for the moment until we know for sure that we're right to go and yeah thing is with two headers you can get a lot of wet grain off pretty quick so we we do have we had the ability to absorb a bit of wet grain so we weren't too concerned before but yeah we really don't want much more so i'm gonna grab a sample off brad here take it back do an nir test and we'll see what that says Oh no, I got the sample off Brad. Uh, this is the NIR tester. So NIR stands for near infrared. Um, so yeah, we go through here, got to let it warm up. Then we set it to barley and uh, yeah, then we get the little cartridge wherever that is. Oh no, so we go number four is barley. Let that calibrate. So we fill the cartridge with barley and then wait till it tells us to put it in, slide it in the slot there. And you remove it, comes up with the numbers there. So we've got four more tests to do. So we'll see what it is at the end. Righto, so that's what it tells us. A little bit high, but it's quite hot and windy out here, so it's not going to be long, and that'll be that'll be where we want it. So, see what happens. So I'm just going to test this again. Let's see what we end up with. Well guys, it's actually turned out to be another frustrating day. Uh, we, we did have a good bit of sunshine, still a little bit there, but the yeah wind died down for a bit there and it's got a bit muggy again. So the moisture's just not coming down. Uh, we've been been right on the edge and she just won't, yeah, won't drop. But anyway, we've pretty well filled up our uh, storage that has the capacity to take wet grain. Um, so yeah, we've just got got a fair bit of barley still out there that we just yeah we're just gonna have to pull up so doing a few tests on the wheat to see what it's doing but i think it's still going to be too high um so yeah we've just got to wait now the reason why it is a bit frustrating but it's just how it is but yeah we've got rain coming this weekend they're talking a couple of days of some good rain and then about three four days after that they're talking more rain so yeah that's when it gets a bit scary um because you got every time you get rain on your crop, it has a potential to uh, minimise the quality. Um, if you get a storm, it has a potential to knock the seeds off, um, which is called shelling out. Like on your wheat, if you get heavy wind and the plants are rubbing together, they can um, yeah you can lose your grain on the ground, which is not where you want it. Um, but anyway, that's that's where we're up to at the minute. We'll see see what is ahead of us. We don't actually know what the next move is, but we just gotta gotta wait at this. Well, we got the other auger down at the other main property, so 
we've got four of the same sort of silos up at the other one but these are actually got they're a little bit taller they got an extra um, couple of sheets on them so these actually hold about 240 ton each of wheat um, and yeah so what we're doing is this one here a bit like up at the other property this one's got four aerators on it the rest of them have just got two each so we can dry grain in these so we've got the wheat is looking like it's it's borderline again so uh, we're probably going to start carting it down to here and um, and filling this one up and yeah we're just really scurrying about trying to get whatever's whatever we can before this before this rain so that's what we're up to it's um interesting well barley harvest is done for the minute there's still oh, probably 150 ton out in the paddock uh that we just yeah it's too wet can't can't uh can't do anything with it so now looks like the wheat is pretty well good to go so i think that'll be it for this video and we'll probably see you very shortly in the next one um but as always check out uh, Instagram and Facebook, uh, the links are in the description and we will yeah, catch you in the next one.